Hey guys, Tarek Mariface here and welcome to another Mariface Aviation video. I haven't been on YouTube for a long, long time. Things got busy with work and then I moved and I just basically fell out of YouTube. And I missed it and recently I've been playing video games and I started streaming them and it was fun. So I decided to go back into YouTube with two YouTube channels. I've been busy with other projects as well, which is tightly under wraps. Really big projects, but I can't really discuss them. Today we're going to be looking at the charts in Navigraph. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Jeppesen charts. A lot of Navigraph users were using the Lido charts, which are great charts made by Lufthansa. However, uh, I personally prefer Jeppesen. They don't look as pretty, but they're a lot more functional in my personal opinion. And, and I'm assuming a lot of companies out there think so as well, because... Jefferson are the most uh, widely used charts in the world. So what I thought I'd do is I'd pick up an airport that has all the types of charts, most of the types of charts, without being too intense. And so here we have Glasgow. And Glasgow has all the charts that we need to understand a little bit of the Jefferson charts. Now, these obviously are for flight simulator. And today we're going to be looking at the radar minimum altitudes chart. And the question is, how realistic are they? Well, I took the real-world counterparts of some of these charts, the up-to-date ones, and I compared them. And I could only find two differences. One, this text at the bottom, this chart is a part of the Navigraph charts, blah, 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 blah. And two, the chart on the side here saying that this chart is linked to this certain Navigraph account. So, these are the up-to-date chart as far as I can tell. Obviously, don't use them for real world. You don't have them, you know, you don't, you, there's no guarantee that they'll be up-to-date. But, so yeah, if you use these properly, then you're essentially doing something quite realistic. So, today we're gonna look at, we're basically gonna work through these, and this is not a tutorial on how to use Navigraph, yeah? We're not, this is not the point of the tutorial. I'm happy to do that. However, if I do that, it will be up in my gaming channel, which I'm trying to grow at the moment. A very, very small channel, uh, which I'm having a lot of fun. I did I did upload a tutorial on how to use Navigraph and Simbrief to plan a flight, and that seems to be doing quite well. And I've also got a lot of gameplay footage, which obviously isn't doing quite as well. Not everyone likes watching people play video games, but that's just for me. I, did it for, I do it for fun, share my, my gameplay with people if you want to watch it free to do so. I digress. Let's talk today about the radar minimum altitudes. Okay, so today we're looking at the reference charts, and that's the only one that we've got here in Glasgow. So we'll talk about this one right here. Let's talk about the header. The header is going to be similar in all the charts, and there's three distinct parts to it. The first on the left, you've got EGPF GLA, the ICAO and the IATA code for the airport Glasgow. Okay, so you've got the, the ICAO, the ICAO code, the IATA code, and then the name of the airport underneath. Simple. So identifying what airport we're talking about. In the middle here, you've got this here, 10-1 Romeo. That's the identifier of that page. And it's very important. Yeah, That along with this, which is the effective date. By checking these two, you're ensuring that you have the same chart for Glasgow. You're looking at the radar minimum altitudes charts, and you're looking at the latest one or the same issue. Now you can see 19th of October 2012, um, quite old. Well, the fact is, what we're looking at here is essentially minimum altitudes, minimum safety altitudes, especially around Scotland where there's the highlands. So in terms of obstacles, they're not going to change that often. So it's not a big surprise that there's, it's been five years since it was last updated. And then on the right here, we've got the town and the country. So it's Glasgow City in the UK. And below that, you've got what you're looking at. So the radar minimum chart. So if I go to another one, for example, the OR ILSDME, you can see Glasgow, UK, NDB, ILSDME. You go to the taxi charts, airport briefing, Glasgow, airport briefing, blah, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. Okay, so you can see that header is always the same. Always. Great. Now let's look at this box. So these two boxes, important information, you know, if you need to look at this quite quickly at a glance in, in the aircraft or whatever, these two will give you important information. 
which which frequency to contact first. Obviously, in reality, ATC will be giving you these frequencies, but you've got that there. And the airport elevation, which is also quite important. And then this box, you find these boxes in some form or another throughout all these charts. So if I go to the star, uh, you have it here. If I go to the approach, you'll have it usually in the approach charts. It'll be below here. Uh, taxi charts sometimes, uh, let's see, no, not in this case. And SIDS should definitely have something or other. There you go. So they all have these, these boxes at the top, which gives you information about the chart or in relation to the information the chart is providing. So here, this chart may only be used for cross-checking altitudes when in receipt of an ATC surveillance service. That's the kind of information you want. Information in relation to approaching or departing the runways or in terms of any approach or any departure. If you scroll down itself, you've got the bit where the pretty drawings, which I like. And let's start with the scales. So here on the side, you see 5600, 5530, and then even 55, uh, 5630. Well, these are the latitudes. It doesn't give you north to south because you can deduce it. Numbers are going up as you go up. Therefore, we're going further north. And as we go north, number goes up. So we're in the Northern Hemisphere. So this is 5630 North. And then on the side here, you've got a scale of nautical miles. Okay. And the reason they've got this is because you see these distances are going to be slightly different to one another because as you go up in the latitudes on a flat sheet of paper, distances change. Along the bottom here, you have 535, 434, 330. And again, this is coordinates. We're talking about longitudes. Yeah, longitudes. And it doesn't give east to west. Well, let's see. If the number is getting smaller going to the right, it means Greenwich is to the right of us. So we're west of Greenwich. So this is 330 west, 4 west, 430 west, 5 west, and so forth. So that's in terms of the, of, of the sides, the, the scale. So you can find the coordinates. For example, if you want to know where this is, you go here and up. And that's 5, was it 515, 510, whatever it is. 510, and then you go across here, and that's about 55, again, I don't know, 20, 5510. Um, I'm not looking carefully. 5510 and 510. So there you go. So now you got a coordinate of this particular terrain. Okay, so map reading, essentially. Cool. Now, so other stuff to notice in these charts, you'll find in all the other charts as well as this one, is this arrow here, yeah? If you're looking for the highest terrain on, depicted on the chart, look for the arrow, and it will point at a point height, and in this case, 3,983 feet. That is the highest obstacle that you will find in the chart. Okay, so 3,983 feet. Great. Next, you see here, you see these random colored, uh, sort of like creamish color. It's basically contour lines, and you can see at the bottom right, you see 2,000 and 4,000. They're saying, assume it's at least 2,000 feet, assume it's at least 4,000 feet. So there you go. So basically the stuff that's in cream colored is 4,000 feet or, or less, and the stuff in white is 2,000 feet or less. Great. Now let's look at this bit itself. If we zoom in, okay, you have this circle with the little bits coming out, looks a bit like a Star Wars <laughs> emblem of some sort and gray. That is the airport. And then the little dotted bit, also in gray, that's the NDB, or the locator. And in this case, it's labeled as a Glasgow locator. Okay? And in black, you have this compass rose with circle around it. That is the Glasgow VOR, and it's in black, so the text for it is in black. So now you've got color coding. And then if so, that way, when you look at these circles, you know that we're talking about uh, in relation to the appropriate color. So for the Glasgow locator gray, that's distance 10 from the locator, distance 20 from the locator, distance 30 from the locator. And then for the black circles, distance 25 from the VOR, distance 40 from the VOR. So now, you, so now when you have an information about your position relative to either of these, you'll be able to know what your minimum sector or minimum safety altitude is. So for instance, if I am radio, radio, let's say, 090 at 30 miles, okay, 090 is that way, from, we'll say, the VOR, okay, so that way, 30, so that's 25, so there would be here, 
and these will be about the same. So here, it is roughly in this position. The MSA is going to be somewhere between 4,000 and 5,500. Yeah. So there you go. I would just take the highest one. It's funny that this actually just realized this box doesn't have anything. I would just take the highest. If you don't know what it is, take the highest MSA on the chart. So probably a bad example here. Um, but yeah, no, actually, nope, it's 4,000. Sorry, these lines, this is a separate line entirely different. So yeah, 4,000. MSA is 4,000. Apologies for that. Cool. Here you can see Presswick, another airport nearby as well. So now you can, you can figure out the minimum safety altitude doing this wherever you are. You can see this numbers here, one and two, and you see it's uh, a holdout. It's a white number with a black circle. Usually that'll mean there's important information for that area, but not enough space to write it. So if you look within the chart, within the drawing, you will find these numbers again in the box. And in this case we have here, and it's not a lot of information. Turns out it's the MSA for the approaches, yeah? 1,600 feet for the part one, so closer to the runway, and in the initial, in the beginning, 2,000 feet. So that's all it is, that information given to you, which is great. And then below, you have a, you have extra information. This, again, not necessarily useful from a practical sense. However, it's good information to have for whatever reason. And then on top of that, if, for example, if you don't understand why HC gave you certain instructions, if you'd read that ahead of time, you might have realized, oh, right, it's because I'm not within five nautical miles of the approach fixed or whatever. Below it, though, that's something we do care about, which is lost communication procedures, yeah? So in case you have Squawk 7600 for those who like VATSIM and stuff. So the, the procedure, in the case of an initial approach, in the initial approach where you lost, lose communication procedures, follow the following steps. And in case you're in the intermediate final approach, okay? So again, it's very much, it's very logically laid out and quite easy to read. And that's it for this chart. It's not very complicated. Um, it's really easy to understand. And all these charts we're going to go through, we're going to go through all of these tabs using an example of a chart every time. Generally, quite easy to follow and understand. Well, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please come back to Marin Face Aviation uh, if you left or if you've been following me this whole time, despite the fact that I've been gone for so long. Thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the other videos. I, I like YouTube. I'm a human being who makes mistakes, and I put that out there in the videos. So, treat me like a human being, please. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please li uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, ask any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. I do read the comments. And uh, take care. I'll see you guys next time. And happy flying.